Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. This is a bit of a uh, <laughs> prologue, a little intro, because life comes at you fast in the NBA. I recorded part two of my pre preseason episode with Chris Magical of the Town Tailgate podcast, the Oakland A's podcast. And all of a sudden, since we recorded that, Draymond Green sprains his ankle. He's out maybe three to six weeks. And uh, Drew Holiday gets traded from the Blazers to the Celtics. That trade was basically Drew Holiday to Boston. And the Celtics are sending Robert Williams III, Malcolm Brogdon, a 2024 first round pick that the Warriors, uh, it was the Warriors pick before, and a 2029 first round pick to the Blazers. So this preface to this episode is largely because what Chris and I talked about a couple days ago was uh, stuff like whether or not the Warriors should try to trade uh, a package of maybe CP3 and Kaminga or somebody else for Drew Holiday when he was for a split second on the Portland Trailblazers. So some of that chatter, but uh, it's definitely still worth a listen because, you know, just talking about some of these pieces that the Warriors have and where they currently stand. We also talked about uh, the roster, the Warriors roster, how it compares to last preseason and how we felt about the team last year and how we feel about it now. And also some early uh, top of the NBA pre preseason rankings. Again, that's before uh, the trade, the Drew Holiday trade to Boston and before Draymond hurt his ankle. Some thoughts on those uh, things that just came up. Draymond Green, uh, this is kind of what I was worried about with the squad. You know, these guys are older and whether or not they – get hurt and how they make it through the whole season. Hey, it's early. I guess you could say it's great that he got this out of the way now, but we all know from watching Steph for 14 some odd years that ankles can linger. Draymond does not have an off season to get the ankle back in shape. I don't know how bad it is just yet, but it's one of those things that hopefully they sit him out long enough so that it heals as good as it can because you don't want that thing to pop up and uh, flare up or you know re-injured at the wrong time like in april and march heading into the playoffs and all that stuff so right now they're already in the mode of okay we have an injury to one of our key dudes So it's not a devastating injury, but it's something that at his age and the position he plays and how critical he is, you just don't want to see that. But hey, you know, in the end, if they manage it well, it might just be one of those things that goes away. Uh, In the short term, you know, the Warriors, uh, they are a little bit thin up front without him. Uh, Obviously, they signed Rudy Gay, who can play a bigger power forward, but he is older and he is new to the team. We'll see if that is somebody that Steve Kerr tries to work into the system a little bit faster, or if he actually gives minutes to, of course, my preference, Jonathan Kaminga, because I feel like that guy, when he steps up, when he's given an opportunity, he'll do, uh, he always does pretty well. Last year, he did well filling in for Andrew Wiggins, but of course, Draymond and his role in the offense uh, is different. But then, Does this mean Chris Paul uh, becomes a starter, right? Draymond is the guy who's out of the uh, usual starting five. Is this a way for Steve Kerr and Chris Paul to kind of get him into that starting unit? It would be small depending on, you know, who else was in the lineup, but just one of those things that they would have to go and see. And, you know, the Warriors, their other bigs, they're relatively young, right? I mean, Kevon Looney, I'm not counting in that because he's their center and whatnot. But if you look at, I mean, Trace Jackson Davis, that dude's a four-year player at Indiana, but he's still a rookie. Uh, will he get minutes? Will Kerr trust him? Track record says no, but I you know, haven't seen. We have to see how this all goes in the preseason and in training camp. And then Uzman Garuba, uh, 
a great pickup as we've talked about in the off season. But again, you know, he's a young dude and has not played one second in this Warriors uh, offense or the Warriors defense. So some challenges right out the gate, uh, but we'll see how it all plays out. I know there's a lot of folks kind of wringing their hands over the fact that the Warriors are so small, but as I've said on social media in YouTube comments and stuff, I think, Hey, Dunleavy's done all right so far and far be it for me to, you know, panic at this stage. We all know that an NBA season is long. We all know that things happen. Guys get injured. Uh, trades happen. Guys step up, guys fall back, all that stuff. And that's why you play the games. I think sometimes there's this sense that the Warriors that we've seen during the heart of the dynasty, some people still want or expect to see this team be the clear cut favorite or else they're done or else they suck or else it's a waste. But I mean, first and foremost, like this is why you watch the games. If the Warriors were a team that were intentionally tanking, then, Hey, you know, maybe that's not worth watching. Uh, but the Warriors, they are going for it. And, uh, they will definitely be up for criticism when things go badly, but you know, let's see how this plays out plain and simple. That's how I kind of look at this thing. And, uh, I trust that adjustments will get made and i trust that when they don't uh warriors fans including you and myself and the regular media out there they'll let them know and then drew holiday man it's funny because after the dame trade i was like well i bet you i bet you the celtics are regretting not having Marcus Smart there to to guard Damian Lillard because I don't think uh, Derek White could do it. But now they have somebody better than Marcus Smart to guard Damian Lillard. They have the guy that uh, Milwaukee used to have in Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday, uh, that really, really helps the Celtics as starters. It makes them thinner in the bench. It makes them thinner up front. You know, Al Horford's older. He can still play, though. Porzingis, uh, you know, he had a a bounce back year, I suppose. And it's just one of those questions like, do you trust him to make it through the playoffs? Do you trust him to make through the season injury wise? And do you trust his toughness? Maybe, maybe not, you know, he's older, more mature. Maybe he can uh, fight his way through. So a lot uh, remains to be seen, but that definitely puts the Celtics back up in uh, the East, Uh, you know, after the Bucks, got Dame, I was like, okay, yeah, they're they're the clear-cut favorites in the East. And I still think they are better because, you know, I trust Dame and I uh, trust Giannis. I don't trust Jason Tatum, you know? Like, I just don't – I don't see it. I've said that before, a great player, but I just don't see him being upper echelon kind of guy yet. He's young. He could get over that hump, prove it, whatever. But I think that with these two teams, you know, the Bucks and the Celtics, I'll go Bucks. I'll go Bucks, and to be honest, you know, I guess this ain't a stretch, but like, if it ain't the Warriors who are going to win the title, uh, or if the Warriors don't make the finals, the Bucks are my second team, right? That's the team I'm pulling for because uh, I don't want a team in the West to win again, and I don't want the Celtics to win, so I'm going Bucks. If it ain't the Warriors, if it's Bucks and Warriors, of course I'd be pulling for the Warriors at that point. But I'll be pulling for Giannis. I like that dude. And I'll also, of course, be pulling for Dame uh, if the Warriors are already eliminated. And then the rest of this episode, I hope you enjoy it. It's a fun conversation to have uh, the second half of it with uh, Chris from the Town Tailgate podcast. So uh, check it out. Again, we do talk about whether or not it's worth trading uh, CP and uh, Jonathan Kaminga for uh, Drew Holiday, obviously, that is kind of old news, but it's a fun conversation just to talk about, you know, the value of who the Warriors have. So uh, enjoy, and hopefully, we'll see you after media day. All right, yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, and today my guest is. Uh, from the same sports network, podcast network that I'm on, Fans First, 
Sports Network, uh, Chris Madrigal from the Town Tailgate Podcast, which is uh, a really, really good Oakland A's podcast. Uh, if uh, if you follow the A's, then you should definitely follow um, Chris and his his show. Uh, welcome, Chris. What's up, man? I'm super pumped to be here. I'm super pumped for the season. The Dame trade, right? <laughs> Just uh, to go to another team uh, to talk about the 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 Bucks. So they traded um, Dame. Uh, there's a bunch of dudes <laughs> involved in this, in this trade, right? So here, actually, I got uh, it. I got it. I can pull it up for you. Um, yeah, yeah. Read it I off. was talking. I was talking about it in a group chat earlier today. The Bucks got Damian Lillard. Um, the Portland Trailblazers got Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, Tumani Kamara. I don't know who that is. Um, uh, the Bucks 2029 first round pick and a pick swap in 2029. And then the Suns got Yusuf Nurkic, Nasir Little, Keon Johnson, and Grayson Allen. Okay. So Dame going to Milwaukee. How does that make you feel? They're the the number one contender in the NBA now. Where did you have them before? I I mean I had them probably like second in the East, maybe behind. Um, actually, the I mean probably yeah yeah behind the Celtics, but I, this definitely puts them first in the East. But like, I think that they're better than the Suns now. They have more depth than the Suns. The Suns got some players in here that kind of like help their depth a little bit, but they're the Suns are shallow man on the bench. It's it's those three guys and. Not much after that. The Lakers are interesting, and that's I don't know. I mean, that's kind of and 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 obviously the Nuggets, but uh, I think this edges the Nuggets and puts them number one. Well, I don't know. What puts do you think? The do you Bucks still number one? Yeah, it puts the Bucks number one. What do, What do you think? Uh, first and foremost, I'm so glad that there's talent, top tier talent. I mean, going east because yeah, my whole life everybody comes yeah. west, and yeah. last season. Durant and Kyrie come west. It's like, come on. So now you're sending somebody east, and at least the top three, four teams have to really, really like duke it out <laughs> a little yeah. bit harder uh, to to get to the uh, finals. Um, but I'd have to look at the Bucks roster. I haven't actually had a chance to look at their depth chart. But you know they lose defense. But like, I mean, I can't wait to see this. Right? It's like Dame, who's still in his late prime and Giannis, if you're the bucks, you got to do that trade. And I'm super excited to, to check that out. Obviously huge Dame fan, right? Oakland's mm-hmm. finest. And I want to see him get to the finals. You know what I mean? But luckily for like us as Warriors fans, uh, cool. We don't have to worry about that until, the, yeah. until the, the finals, if uh, knock on wood, like we're fortunate enough to make it there. So uh, enjoy that. Celtics. I know Celtics fans are really, really like they really believe that they are that good and they mm-hmm. are good. But, you know, let's see how Przingis holds up and if they uh, are going to regret getting rid of uh, Marcus Smart, because Marcus Smart would have been a nice person to have to guard Dame in a playoff series, mm-hmm. to be honest. Um, but uh, I'm glad he didn't that he's no longer stuck in Portland. Um and it is what it is. I think Scoot Henderson is going to be a really fun player to watch. I think that dude's oh, yeah. of the year. And because uh, he's going to have the green light. And I'm curious to see what if he and Aiton get along and if uh, uh, some of those other young dudes on the Blazers can, can uh, you know, come into their own a little bit. Did you hear, like, I, I haven't, you know, like I was talking to a friend of mine who's a, a big Warriors fan. He's like, what's all this chatter about? Is this real chatter? But, like, of the <laughs> Warriors – People trying to speak into existence a, a Chris Paul Kaminga trade for Drew Holiday. Is that I haven't seen that. I haven't been on social media today. I haven't looked at any sports. I've been busy with other stuff. But like, is that real or is that just fan fiction? That is real. The person who put that out in the ether was Chris Mannix. Chris Mannix is one okay. of the most trustworthy like insiders sure, yeah. that I follow in basketball. So when he puts it out there. It's real. I I was with you. I saw it too, and I was like, "This can't be real." And then I saw the source of it, and it came from Chris Mannix. He tweeted it this morning, and I was just like, "Wow, this is interesting." And I spent a lot of his podcast like praising Chris Paul and the Warriors. But man, would I love Drew Holiday? I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I I would do that deal for sure. Um, 
Yeah. 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 You you, oh, would, yeah. you would trade <clears throat> CP and Kaminga. I love Drew Holiday. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 What, was was Chris Mannix saying like this is what he's hearing, or this is like what you know he's imagining? Like you know what I mean? Like where could Drew Holiday go? I think um, I don't. Or, I don't I don't think he said like like I think or I hear I think he said was like I could see this happening type of thing and like Chris Mannix is pretty like careful about um putting things sure. out there like that so that's why I'm a little bit like oh like he I think that he's he look he comes on the Dan Patrick show every every like once in a while I'm sure he's going to come on tomorrow. I will be tuning in to find out if he does so he can elaborate more. But yeah, he he threw that out there. So there there's there's validity to it, in my opinion. Whew, yeah, um, I uh, if, if Kaminga is involved, I would not. I love Drew Holiday, too. Uh, I think he'd be a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. uh, another friend of mine right after the trade came out, he's like, uh, CP for Drew Holiday. <laughs> yeah, cool. Of course. Yeah, that 100 uh, percent, 100 times over. But uh, if you got to throw Kaminga in, I personally just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't pull the trigger on that. But then again, I'm the guy, as soon as Kaminga got drafted, I was like, this, this is going to be the best dude on the Warriors in four years. Um, so you're high on so, Kaminga. Uh, you're, you're like all in on him. Yeah. If, if he gets the playing time, you know, and, uh, I remember I was a little disappointed in him, uh, summer league two season two summer leagues ago two summers ago i guess mm -hmm. 2022 summer league because okay it's like he didn't have the handle he didn't have the point forward uh you know game locked down yet um but you know i want to see how he develops how he's used we'll see we'll see you know a lot of it is opportunity of course i think he has the skills but like can he get in those game opportunities and earn steve kerr's trust with the ball in his hands doing doing stuff and obviously it's you know like anybody can bring up the ball in a warrior's offense uh but can he make good decisions instead of just being like a a, a drive and um you know drive and dive for the basket kind of guy yeah because i know he can do more than that but that's where he shined his uh shown shine whatever uh where <laughs> he was at his best his rookie year and where he ended up kind of leaning more into uh in his second year so uh, i personally wouldn't do it but i i cannot blame anybody uh if if they were to do it if it's moody then sure <laughs> take moody take pods take whomever <laughs> just See, uh, like leave that, me, uh leave me jk i feel like uh so i i I don't know how to feel about Kaminga because i see the flashes and i'm like oh man this is fun but i feel like warriors fans are like overly apologetic about Kaminga, where it's like it, he makes so many mental mistakes mostly on defense but on both sides of the court because and he really puts them in a hole and like teams will go on like 10-0 runs because of the mistakes that he makes sometimes but like some of the flashes are a lot of fun and i will say in defense of kaminga too many factors around him have changed since he's joined this team like it feels like every year he's kind of steve kerr has a role for him and they put him in that role and then, you know, like something happens, injuries happen, and his role has to change. So it's just like he has to prove himself, but he doesn't get enough time to prove himself, you know? So it, it's just like I, I it's it's a long process. I I get that he's like this athletic specimen, and I just want to see him do interesting things, but his unreliability is why I'm easy to pull the trigger on that trade where it's like Drew Holiday, like freaking drew holiday dude like that's about as reliable as it comes and like i think like moody's been more reliable than kaminga has uh and he, moody's in the same situation it's been a lot of weird things like that but i feel like moody's been more reliable than kaminga has in the past i mean i think his reliability is only in the playoffs that we saw um because mm. he barely played <laughs> in the regular season i know like i, I see kaminga's flaws as well uh, and when I said he's going to be their best player in four years, that was based on, on the talent. And then also like, then you fast forward a couple of years of playing time and development and, you know, he had a short leash. Like why didn't pool have a short leash? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, um, and then pool like on, uh, like Andre Godala kind of said on, uh, the, uh, JJ Reddick podcast that, um, with pool, he's looking at like 
clay and it's like <laughs> why do they have a long leash you know yeah um yeah so to me uh i think defensively you know it's it's he he needs to play he needs to get better 100 percent. like that's no doubt my friend who was on the show a couple weeks ago my friend vubang he was like he hates on wiseman he hates on on kaminga and stuff and i'm like why do you hate those dudes why do you hate kaminga so much he's like well look who was drafted after him i was like well first of all it's not his fault and he's yeah. really talented and and also it's like there's nobody drafted after him outside of uh franz wagner that i would want in his place right now right now you know so i think you know if, if you had taken any of those dudes drafted after kaminga then you put them in the situation how much playing time would they have gotten on this warriors team the last couple of years uh, maybe wagner maybe wagner's in the doghouse for a while you know what i mean uh or maybe he he shines with his passing and his his ability to do a lot of things on the court and his IQ, whatever. But um, you know, uh as I said, I love Kaminga. I wouldn't do that trade, but I fully understand uh how, why you would and why somebody would. And that would put this Warriors team in an amazing spot mm-hmm. for uh this season i don't know what drew holiday's contract situation he's is. got a player uh, option for next year is. for 37 million so it'd be next it would be next season too yeah okay yeah so you know uh it uh, uh it is what it is but i will uh still like uh, plant my flag on uh on uh kaminga kaminga island what are you looking for on media day in general, you know, it's just everybody takes pictures, everybody takes like, you know, has like their their fun questions, maybe some tough questions besides like questions of whether or not Chris Paul will start and how it'll fit in all this jazz. Is there anything to you that you're going to keep your eye out on? I want to hear Steve Kerr give us more information on what Kaminga and Moody's roles are going to be in this team in this off the bench this this coming season, because, again, like. Where is the offense going to come from in the second unit? I have want to know, and I want answers. And and I think that it's going to be Kaminga and Moody are going to get the green light and let them do their thing. But I don't know. So like, I that's what I want to know. I you know the mm-hmm. starting lineup thing is not. I don't you know that is what it is. I don't. I that'll be figured out. It'll probably change mid season if anything because it always does. But. I want to know. I want to know where the offense is going to come from in the second unit, and I want to know what Moody and Kaminga's roles are going to be. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's that's fair. That is one hundred percent fair. I'm curious to see what he says. Although I have a feeling he'll just say kind of some canned stuff, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm okay. Like I'm okay with seeing like how uh, this this rolls out. Um, but, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see. Cause you know, maybe mix and match because like the last couple of off off seasons, they've made moves to get scoring on the bench, but this year they didn't except for gallon or except for Sarich really, mm-hmm. you know? So like, I just, the only thing I can think of is like, they thought they had it already in house. That's why they didn't make the moves or they just got outbid yeah. by other teams who knows, but, but Yeah. Or or you just get uh, two uh, veteran players from the Pistons, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and it's like they they say to uh, they're gonna say to Moody and Kaminga, you see these see these dudes, and then see mm-hmm. Rudy Gay, like if you don't play well, <laughs> they are gonna play. Here's you, this guy, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, honestly, as much as I uh, I appreciate Gary Payton the second, and everybody loves him. I'm like, I hope he doesn't take a ton of time from Kaminga mm-hmm. off the bench. You know, like, uh, yeah, I don't know how you felt about Wiseman. I, maybe because I just looked at him as a kid and I felt bad for the kid uh, and some of the breaks he had along, along the way. I was like, I, wa- I wanted to see what he could do if, if healthy, right? I was the same and, way, yeah. And like, as much as I loved Gary Payton, I was like, oh, man, I, I don't want to trade for a dude that's injured. You know, mm. and then if if Steph wants uh, uh, Peyton, and then we lose Wiseman, great. If having Peyton there prevents Kaminga from reaching his true self and gets him jettisoned, uh, I will be also disappointed. You know what I mean? Like it's it's uh, again, I'm a I'm a Peyton fan, of course, uh, yeah. but that's uh, that would be kind of a kind of a shame. 
as this team kind of gets closer to the the end, this core, uh, do you do you think about that? Do you think about any kind of worries or like anxiety of of seeing this team without Steph, without Clay, without Draymond, and just kind of you know this this era that's lasted since you know started two thousand nine. 2011 2012 with those guys do you ever think about you know everybody talks about last dance type stuff uh i don't think this is it i didn't think last season was it either um unless you move draymond uh but do you uh uh ever sit there and be like oh man this this is gonna be over soon uh i did until steph curry finished top three in mvp voting the past two seasons now i'm like oh okay so steph curry is the tom (laughs) brady of basketball got it so he has a second prime that he's gonna keep going and going going you know like Mm -hmm. i that's just that's that was that was how it felt to me and like he kind of is having that career trajectory that tom had you know tom had those first three championships at the beginning of his career and with with those specific guys you know when he was when when kevin falk was his running back and he was thrown to Dion branch and stuff like that and then he had the second tier of his career where it was gronk and it was wes welker and stuff and that's how it feels like with steph it was like steph clay draymond obviously but like andre sean livingston zaza pachulia and then now is like this version of it and like these new guys where it's you know gary payton the second and it's Jordan Poole, but not anymore. It was Jordan Poole. And, you know, like, and then Kaminga and Moody. So I just feel like, like he's defying the, the laws of athletes careers. And like, Mm I just think that he's got like three more years left in this second extended prime. And then it's going to go downhill. You know, I, I, I like, I think a lot of like Bill Simmons always, um, associates the warriors kind of with the spurs run and i kind of feel like we're at like the 2011 like or two early 2010s era of the spurs so it's like it's mm-hmm. not over yet there's a few years left and then it's going to start going downhill and then they're not going to be competing for championships anymore they'll be good but they won't compete for championships anymore but i still think that we're in like a prime if does that make sense what i'm saying yeah absolutely absolutely i mean yeah when i said after the 21 draft that coming's gonna be the best player in like four years uh it was like depending on how steph ages and <laughs> i think i said at some point last season i'm like okay maybe he'll, uh, he'll be second best after steph uh in a couple years but we'll see but that being said it's because steph has proven to be uh, he's he's aging well. We knew he kind of would as long as he was healthy enough, right? Because mm. uh, his shot is never going to leave him. He's super well conditioned, and he's smart. So, and it's, he's never relied on crazy athleticism. So, you, I and thought you, both he and Clay, you brought mm. up the last dance. Like it, it's like the exact same thing that Jordan did. You know, when when he couldn't get past the Pistons, it was because he was small and not strong enough. He needed to get stronger. He needed to bulk up a little bit so he could handle the physicality of the Pistons. Steph did the exact same thing. The rules of the game changed, and the and like he was just like he wasn't able. He wasn't strong enough. He wasn't tough enough to get through. You know, a lot of these screens and stuff like that. So what did he do? He went in the off season two years ago, and he got like ten pounds of muscle. He built ten pounds of lean muscle that he could still run around and do. Like that. That completely changed everything, dude. Like it, that's what extended yeah. his prime. Do you think this roster is better than the roster from last uh, training camp? Do you feel like they're going in with a better team? So you're saying, would you say my brain from last, like, tra- like September, like, 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 how, like how, last September, how this I team? felt, yeah, I felt confident, and then Draymond Green punched Jordan Poole in the face, and then I didn't feel confident <laughs> anymore. So, like, but in terms of roster con- con- construction, no, I liked last year's roster construction better, but chemistry and versatility, I like this roster uh more what did you like about last season's roster better because i'm actually surprised you said that um i you know i was high on jordan pool um Mm -hmm. i was high on 
uh, Moody and Kaminga working well with Jordan Poole because I felt like these guys kind of came up in the system together. They played, uh, you know, in the G League together. They kind of, I feel like they're just young and they had that chemistry and then it was proven wrong because Jordan Poole was a ball hog. But like, it's just, you know, I I, I don't say that as like a jab to Jordan Poole. It's just kind of like, it's just the style of play just kind of changed a little bit. Um, sure. And I felt like th- there was just like more depth um, you know, even like Jamichael Green, I was like, oh, okay, like he could be like a, a pretty like decent role player. Like, I, I don't even like, would you say like Sarich is the Jamichael Green of this of this roster this year? Like, I, I, I just like, yeah, I just don't, of, uh, yeah, I, I just don't know like the second unit's roles, whereas like last year it was clearly defined, you know, so mm. 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 I'm well, I'm a little conf- confused and 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 curious to see like how that's going to develop yeah i was really high on the team going into i mean they were coming off a title right and everything was like great that too yeah i thought the young yeah. dudes were going to make a leap uh but then you realize they didn't really play that much when it mattered so that leap really wasn't mm-hmm. there yet in terms of like game time right they may have like yeah. m- mentally felt more confident but um and then, yeah, the Draymond thing, I think, killed the season. I mean, that's, that's the thing. I don't blame Wiseman. I don't blame uh, Laco, but I don't blame – I mean, that's that's it. That's it, you know? Like, they were bad on yeah. the road, weirdly bad on the road because they didn't, they didn't like each other, you know? There mm-hmm. were at least groups. There was weird tension and whatnot. I'll be honest. I was, like, more excited about last year's team because of, uh, again, coming off a title. And I love homegrown talent. Like, that is mm-hmm. what you live for as a sports fan. Uh, unless you're a Lakers fan, you just like to buy talent. But like, <laughs> um, with with this team, it's like, okay, this is just like the practical team to me, right? Let's let's, mm-hmm. let's uh, get some old heads. Uh, let's keep some young guys. Let's draft a, a relatively lower ceiling f- uh, four year college player. Let's. I'm not. I'm not sure what I think about um, pods, uh, to be honest, but. I would, have, I would have liked uh, Keegan Murray's brother. <laughs> uh, yeah. But but with this team, I'm like, okay, they're putting their uh, briefcases together and going to work, and they're going to try to methodically figure this out and get a title. So uh, I'm good with that. Uh, I'll, I'll always like feel the sting of last season, right? Like a lot of people say, oh, get 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 over it, move, move past it. And yeah, you, you move past it. I'm not going to be – uh talking about you know james wiseman in like the third month of the season unless something crazy yeah. happened with him but uh as a fan like like you and like you know oh uh, you live and die with this stuff you, you don't let this stuff go it's always going to be like you know gilbert arenas losing gilbert arenas because they couldn't sign him mm-hmm. uh to a longer term contract or couldn't match a contract uh is always going to burn you know losing uh chris weber etc so so I'm excited as I always am for an like, upcoming season, but it's like, well, those uh, those those big swings uh, didn't all all work out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, on paper, knowing what we know about this team, where they want to go, uh, they'll, they're probably more equipped and better than they were in hindsight, <laughs> right? Uh, than than last season. Before we saw the season play out, like it was like, oh man. We're, we're doing this, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? We're going to go on this 20-year dynasty, you know? Let me ask you um, your pre, pre-season pre predictions uh, for the season. Let me just, you know, don't have to go too deep into it. But, like, where do you think the Warriors end, end up in this pre, pre-season episode? Okay. Um, I think that we are the third best team in the West. I think the two teams that were in the Western Conference Finals last year are better teams than we are. I don't think there's any question about that. I think Sacramento is looming, but I still would take us over Sacramento because what Sacramento did this offseason is they just ran it back. And I've never seen that to be successful. Um, typically, you need to improve on on your um, your weaknesses, and um, they just... 
they could have got a better small forward, um, someone more reliable. Instead, they re-sign Harrison Barnes, which I get. He's like the leader of the team. Like I, I respect that move, but like Sacramento is the only team that I think could have jumped us. The Clippers are the Clippers, man. I just I can't get on that Clipper train. I just I just can't. You know, Clippers are gonna Clipper. Um, and uh, you know, Minnesota I think is too young and inexperienced. Um, so I think that they are the third best team in the West and I'm pretty confident about that. I think they will be the, I think they will be the three seed. Um, the Lakers, I think, um, I just think that they, they really killed free agency and they got so much depth on their team. Like they just, they have guys for guys for guys. And I, it, it, the success of their team does weigh on Anthony Davis. Can he stay healthy? You know, more likely than not it's going to be no because the history of his career says no, but they have the depth to where I think they, even if he goes down, they'll still be competitive. Um, and then, I mean, the nuggets are just so freaking good. I mean, yeah. yeah so yeah, I, yeah. I think the Warriors are the third best team in the, in the West. Where do you rank them in the NBA taking the East into account? Take, I mean, basically like, are they, are they better than the Celtics? You think, or are they better? You don't think they're better than the Bucks? Not exactly better than the Celtics, but... not better than the Bucks. They're better. So they're I, I and I, yeah, and, and you know, the the clip, I mean, the the Sixers are that other team, um, right there. But God, do the Sixers have a lot of issues going on with that yeah. team, dude? So I'm more confident in the Warriors than than in the Sixers. So, yeah, I mean, I yeah. would say five. You know, could, could yeah, you, yeah, do you yeah. think the Knicks are better? The Knicks are better yeah. than last year. Or the Knicks are better than the Warriors. The Warriors. I'm I'm just trying to think of teams that like that are competitive in the east that are would be no like, no Knicks, no, no. I, I, the the, no, the Cavs, no. no the heat no the heat definitely no, no. no. the heat are going to be way worse this season they lost so many guys um yeah you know yeah. I, I said uh i said a couple weeks ago i also put the warriors in three behind denver and lakers um yeah. i put the suns up there with them um i think i do think that they're better after the trade, to be honest, right? Like they, the Suns are. I'm, I'm glad they got rid of Aiden because he gave the Warriors more problems than yeah. Nurkic ever did. Uh, but uh, as my a friend of mine pointed out, is like addition by subtraction. You want to get rid of Aiden's contract and his, uh, you know, chemistry issues, and then you bring in a guy who who doesn't, who's older, who doesn't care about being a star, knows his ceiling, knows his role, all that stuff. So you won't get any uh, drama with that. But again, like I said, and like we all know, especially with some of these old head teams, I don't, it, it really depends on on the health. I mean, the Clippers, come on, and not, yeah. not even close. I don't trust them to be healthy. Um, and I do put, you know, I, again, I would have to look at the Warriors, or sorry, the, the Bucks roster. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, not not necessarily to to cop out of that one, but I'm not exactly sure how what the rotations are now because they lost some depth. But you know the Celtics are good. I just you know I Tatum is good, Jalen Brown is good, but this whole Tatum is that great. I just haven't seen it. I haven't seen him step up. Uh, he stepped up in some games in the playoffs. Like I know that he dropped 50 at some point last uh, season. But just the way he got worked in the Warriors finals, I I haven't seen that dude yet. So I'll put the Warriors at like three or four. I think they're better than the Celtics, right? The, the Celtics the get Celtics, all the hype. The Celtics lost Smart, who was the toughest guy on their team. They are soft, yeah. dude. Like this when the Celtics play the Warriors, like I I I would like to tell your listeners to like keep a close eye like draymond green andrew wiggins and uh and uh uh uh, kavon looney are gonna bully that team up and down the court like you replaced marcus smart with Kristaps porzingis who like his big issue was that he's like a soft big like i just Mm -hmm. like in those like in those intense playoff series like you need some guys who are going to bring the toughness and i just i don't see anybody on their roster anymore who can do that yeah no that's a really good point um and so like that's why i put the warriors uh above yeah the celtics so i'd 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 put the warriors depending on how i feel about the suns i don't know they're in the cluster from uh four or five you know would throw the bucks in there you know four five six 
you know. I kind of have the Suns so, like right at our level, just like their their lack of depth and 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 I'm curious to see like how their three guys kind of work together too, and, you know. And, and, I, and I put the Warriors, I put the Warriors like core guys above uh Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, who is younger but hasn't done anything yet, and Bradley Beal, who I've always I've I've thought these last three, four years has been really overrated because mm-hmm. Agree. I mean, people would always toss his name out, especially during the um the uh, uh the year where the Warriors made the um they lost in the play in round. Mm-hmm. Because earlier that season I was like, oh trade for Beal, he's leading the league in scoring. But it's like he plays for a terrible team. He's never done anything with that team. And he was just the biggest name available right it wasn't like all of a sudden he was this all-time two guard you know he's a scorer he's great you know but like uh he's never done it so i take the warriors over that you know Mm -hmm. i put the warriors over the suns there i figured out just now i put the warriors over the suns just because of that assuming you know reasonable health and then i put the then i put the bucks over the the sun so for me it's denver uh gosh i guess i said lakers and then uh bucks warriors I think that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but and also Whatever. who's going to play homer. defense? Who's going to play defense on the Suns? Like that's that's another big question. Like they can put up 130 points, but they're going to give up 130 points too, you know? Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly it. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly it. Um let's see. Cool, man. I think that's all I got. You got any other final thoughts on this? Uh no, I mean I want to say, you know, I I'm very excited like again, I we we I, I feel like I could complain a little bit about some of the roster moves and stuff like that <laughs> on this team, on this episode. And I, I had my, my uh, reservations on certain things, but like, I am very excited for basketball season to start. I am, you know, I am such in such a, uh, a negative sports fandom mode. I need a team who's going to be good and successful to root for. So, and I think the Warriors are going to be good this season there are a lot of questions around or a few questions I have for them, but you know, it's mostly, I just want to, I, I, I am excited to, to see what, what, what they can do and, and what Chris Paul, how he's going to fit with his team, especially because Draymond and Chris Paul have not liked each other throughout their career. So I want to see how that chemistry is going to go. Yeah. 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 They're both like, uh, you know, Chris Paul, he's, he's a banana boat guy. And Draymond wishes he was. So like, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff. That's a great. That's and, a great one. Uh, yeah. Again, they're they're in their they're in their thirties. If they were like ten years younger each, they'd still be trying to to uh, feel themselves and uh, mm-hmm. exert certain things, and they'll still do that, but you know, not to the extent that they would have uh, otherwise. Hopefully, some maturity. Uh, <laughs> I got to laugh at that every time because I just think of like maturity and Draymond and what he did last mm-hmm. season. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. He's going to like help make these young guys like really learn, you know, in training camp. I think that, I think that he's going to do a lot for that. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Man, absolutely. Well, thank you, Chris, for coming on to the show. I'm going to have you on again. If you want to come back, uh, it was a fun conversation. Absolutely. And um yeah, you can uh, again. Thanks for having listen me, man. to. Yeah, for sure. Ha, you can listen to Chris on his podcast about the uh, as of now the Oakland A's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Town Tailgate podcast uh, at Town Tailgate, and his personal Twitter, Chris twenty four K Magic. Memorize that, okay? Memorize that, y'all. Um, <laughs> so thank you once again, man. And um, yeah, let's see what happens on uh, on media, man. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, sounds good.